are the large scale issues facing the United States, resource issues, energy issues. I really doubt that that's what the vice presidential candidates are going to focus on in the debate tonight. Uh, if you had to make your list of America's top priorities, what would they be? And do you think any will match up with what the vice presidential candidates will say? Uh, energy. So let's dive into a couple of the things that you just said, because you gave a very good summation of kind of where you think we should be headed. Let's look at where we have been headed based on the, the spending that the government has done. Let's look at war spending. And, and just to listen to what Mitt Romney, for example, in his recent foreign policy speech was saying, he kind of sounded to me like he's trying to out hawk Obama. And Obama's a Democratic president that led the U.S. into war with Libya, escalated the war with Afghanistan. So when we're looking to the Persian Gulf and the Middle East, where do you think either president is leading us and in terms of what impact it will have on oil and energy and that military spending will have on this country's already terrible finances. I mean, you know, you talked earlier in the show about currencies uh, coming down. Brazil and Korea cut interest rates today. Right. I mean, yeah. our interest rates can't go any lower. I know. It's I guess crazy to see theirs. They cut theirs to like 7.25%. It's like, well, you right. got a long way to go before zero. <laughs> right. It's a long way to go before zero. But what is. Then, Dr. Lee, because it brings me to since we're talking about big oil, since we're talking about energy wars, over the years, there have been numerous critics that have talked about the U.S. being engaged in wars in the Middle East and the Persian Gulf driven by oil, driven by securing resources. If you look back, Dick Cheney is quoted talking about the concern of Saddam controlling so many oil reserves in Iraq and exerting pressure pressure with weapons on, on other areas and securing resources. But if we're talking about securing resources, is securing a depleting resource, oil, via costly wars that have been paid for with a credit card, is that really the best way to do it uh, versus, say, investing heavily in what you're talking about at home? He has been fighting that war, has cost a lot of lives. So the way you're talking about is much more humane, too, to make one moral point. Uh, we are going to go to break. I want to keep you on. I want to talk about the imp by politicians. So, Dr. Lee, let's continue this. Let's take this, though, to a slightly different uh industry, which is banking, because I think we're fed a lot of lines from politicians about, about the banking industry and what makes for a healthy economy. We were told that bailouts were to save the real economy. We are told that QE and, and all of these different QE programs have been to save and help the real economy, QE3 being the most recent with buying mortgage-backed securities to arguably help homeowners. But my question to you, if this was really about helping homeowners, wouldn't it be more effective for the Fed to set up some kind of lending facility like a maiden lane to more directly get that aid to mortgage holders? as opposed to being a, a customer for the biggest banks and their bad mortgage-backed securities? There is trickle-down economics in this country in the sense that by the time the money trickles down to Main Street, there is none left. First to the feeding trough is Wall Street, military contractors, and, and oil companies as three examples. You know, I think it's almost worth Before we go, speaking of people that are seeing their quality of life decline, uh, one of the concerns with banks that are cutting rates are not only the U.S. with the fiscal cliff, but the Eurozone. And I want to bring up a chart of Greece uh, because we have a great one of, of GDP. Staying in the Eurozone. Now, that doesn't mean that. Dr. Lieb, I completely hear you. We're going to have to leave it there. It was Dimitri Kofinas you were talking about. He knows Thanks. Greece better than almost anyone I know. I really appreciate you being on the show and expounding on all of all right, let's wrap up with loose change because, boy, do we have something exciting for you. So, Dimitri, thank you for being here to talk with me. It's my pleasure, about Lauren, Jamie I love Dine. it. <laughs> where do we even begin? Dimitri, where, you, you pick a place. I don't know. There's so many great things. Like, first of all, he was so pompous. I mean, the fact that he... The banks are actually uh, vital to health of the economy and arguably too big to fail ones currently are not. But right, but like, and then and then he was so pompous. Just the way that he, it was like, I mean, he was like, net, net. just have to build up some yeah, other just some, <laughs> just financial some other engineering. Stuff. Yeah, just some other stuff, like in general, just like how pompous he was. And then he also made some only real question that actually mattered was Justine's yeah. questions, and it was because she literally said them straight up. When you acquired Bear, no, he's like, let me get this straight. Yeah. We did, we, we did the Fed a favor, we yeah. did, which is absurd. I remember how he was running around. Idea. So this is plain BS. Yeah, and you know the term fight the Fed? I feel like Jamie Dimon thinks that the Fed has nothing on him. He fights the Fed every time that he talks. <laughs> He's talking about QE, almost like, oh, the Fed, that's $3 trillion. <laughs> you know how many, how many assets we have? $80 trillion. That, like that, the Fed has enough of your book. But also the point is that, that is, that's capable of the letters that, that Jim Grant talks about. It's the fact that you don't actually know what any, nobody else knows about. I don't know why you care. Well, sorry, guy. The reason why you're a you're trader over there in London is a single day so that you can have unrealized losses on your books and carry them, all right? And then every time you realize one, okay, I realize a little loss.
cross. Until it's, which is it, why he thinks he's a doctor and he's, you know, he's Jesus. We got right. him here as yeah, Jesus. Yeah, tell us, here. explain this. Uh, this yeah, it's a divine platform. right of bankers. He thinks that he is. <laughs> all right. We'll leave it there. That's all we have time for. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back tomorrow. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Lister. You can like our Facebook page. Uh, give us feedback. Catch any shows you missed at youtube.com slash capital account. Let us know what you thought of that Jamie Dimon mashup. You can catch us in HD on Hulu and you can go have yourself a great night.